Oh, when I've traveled my last mile, and he says, come in, my child, they'll be glad we live for Jesus. When the books are open wide, and our names are found inside, then we'll be glad. sent for Joab to have him sent to the king but he would not come to him but let's read it again verse 29 then Solomon, Absalom sent for Joab to have him sent to the king but he would not come to him and when he sent again the second time he would not come Therefore, he said to his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and he hath barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Joab rose and came down to Absalom unto his house and said unto him, Wherefore have thy servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent unto thee, saying, Come hither, that I may send thee to the king to say, Wherefore am I come from Geshur? It had been good for me to have still been there. Now therefore let me see the king's face. And if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. So Joab came to the king and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. If I could preach for a few minutes today, I'd like to use an old title. You'll set your fields on fire. Uh -huh. Now, the first time I ever heard a sermon preached on this, I was up in Owsley County, at a little country church. I don't think that, that no, that church don't even, it's not even there anymore. The building's not. And uh, I heard Elsie Allen preach on that. And then later I found that he copied that from Jack Cole, which was a popular preacher in his day. And uh, he just about preached it word for word. And I'm not going to do that this morning. 
And I found that, uh, Brother Tony mentioned Charles Spurgeon. I found that Charles Spurgeon preached a message on he'll set your fields on fire. And then there's a, a, a gospel bluegrass, he'll set your fields on fire. But at any rate, it all comes from that passage of Scripture, this passage of Scripture we just read here today, amen, where Absalom had been in exile because he had his brother Amnon killed. and uh, But then Joab got him brought home uh, through a little trickery. But then for two years... <clears throat> He's still almost like he was in exile, and uh, but he wanted to see David. He wanted to see the king. Now we know by the reading the whole entire story that uh, Absalom had something up his sleeve too before it all transpired. But uh, nevertheless, the point that I want to make here today, if I'm <clears throat> not taking it too far out of its context, that. Uh, uh, he sent for Joab because Joab had access to David. Wow. Sent the first time. Yeah. Never paid him no mind. Mm -hmm. Sent the second time. Never paid him no mind. Right. So he said, sent the third time. I'm going to get his attention. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to set his body field on fire. Uh -huh. Amen. When I do that, I guarantee you that will get his attention. Because when harvest comes, he's not going to have any barley. Amen. Help me preach here a few minutes. Yeah. Amen. And I'm telling you, there are times in our lives that we may ask God this question. Lord, why did you set my field on fire? Come on. Come on. Is it because God tried to get our attention once Come on. and we didn't pay any attention to what he had to say? Is it because he tried to get our attention twice? And we failed to pay attention to what he had to say. Amen. 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 And then after a while, something out of the ordinary happens. I start to say spectacular, but everything that happens bad is certainly not spectacular. No, not. Amen. Something will take place that's out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. And we realize this should not have happened. Amen. Lord, is it just part of my life or is it you trying to get my attention? Amen. But I'm going to tell you not always, but I'm t I can tell you but by, by, by uh, uh, using my own self as an illustration. God usually, when he tries to get my attention, I know it's God and I know where it's coming from. Amen. Are you helping me preach? Amen. Amen. I know why generally... Lord, but we always ask that question. God, why did you set my field on fire? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's a great price to pay for being disobedient to God. Amen. Uh, Tony in his exhortation this morning mentioned David and his sin. Who told him that he wouldn't surely die for what he did and for committing adultery and having a man killed at the same time or, or over the reason of it. Amen. It was worthy of death according to the law. Absolutely. But Amen. Nathan said you won't die because of what you've done. But the sword will not depart from your door. Amen. That wouldn't necessarily the kingdom of Israel, that was his door, Amen. his family, Amen. things that concerned him. And it started with, Ab uh, uh, with Amnon, defiling his sister, Absalom killing him, is having his brother killed. Amen. And then problem after problem after problem kept arising in his house. Amen. There's a great price to pay for disobeying God. Are you helping me here today? Amen. God had a way of setting David's field on fire. Amen. To always keep him in remembrance. You messed up here, buddy. I told you these things was going to happen. And they did happen. Paul, I'd like to 
to preach here this morning if the Lord would just help me. Yes. Amen. Amen. God will get our attention for our disobedience. Amen. 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 I wonder what our barley field is today. Lord bless you, Jesus. I can tell most of us, and I don't think I'd mention it very far, distractions are a lot of barley fields right. that needs to be set on fire. Amen. Distractions. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Distractions keep me from praying. Amen. How about you? Yes. Amen. I got tired the other night and I was tired. <clears throat> I come home and I had done some studying and, and we've not been doing our Bible reading like we had been because uh, of the painting and various other things. And uh, well, Mr. I got down to pray and I went to sleep. And your mama come to get ready for bed and she shakes me and wakes me up. The only good thing about going to sleep when you're praying, if you die in that condition, the last person you talk to be the first person you meet when you wake up. Amen. Amen. But, but I don't like to go to sleep when I'm praying. I don't. I don't like to have so many distractions to keep me out of the presence of God. Do you realize when I went to sleep, I never got in the presence of God? I never got through that far. I never got past the distractions here. And, and Jesus told his disciples, when you pray, go in your closet or that private place to pray and shut the door. Amen. You might not have a private place to pray. Amen. But you can shut the door. We can shut the door of our minds to keep that devil from bombarding us. Sometimes it takes me 30 minutes to get past my distractions. I had a preacher, preacher revival here one time. And we was having a prayer meeting on Wednesday. And he said, you're a prayer meeting every Wednesday? I said, because at that time, Sister Kathy, we had several coming out here. And I said, yeah, every Wednesday we have a prayer meeting. And uh, he said, how long do you pray? I said, generally about an hour. He said, now a preacher said this to me. He said, what do you pray about for a whole hour? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Apparently that man had never been in the presence of God to where you oh, stopped Lord. saying words and you were just crying and praising yeah. God and <laughs> perhaps talking in other tongues and speaking in the spirit and the Lord talking to your spirit while you're talking back to heaven with your spirit. Apparently he had never been that deep in the spirit and yet he was preaching revivals. Needless to say, there was not much accomplished the week he was here. Amen. Number one, my confidence failed. If he had never been in the presence of God, what in the world did he have to tell us with a revival sermon? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hadn't he ever been through anything in his life, Brother Mitchell, to where he had to agonize with God to be able to get through that? I wonder what we have to do to say to pray about for an hour. My God. We've got to pray a while to get past them as distractions. Get that body field set on fire. Amen. To get in the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you something else. If I'm not taking it too far out of its context. What about that thing that you value above hearing and responding to the word of God? Amen. Bless you, Lord. I forgot the preacher's name right now. I'm terrible with names anymore. But he pastored up Hamilton at B Street. Brother Haney. Brother James Haney. Brother James Haney. He preached a revival here for us one time and talked about hearing the word of the Lord. And he said, of course he was preaching over there, and he said, you can get outside and you can holler 
And he said, I can still hear you because he's right up, up, up around Morgan County and, and them hollows and hills up in there. And uh, Wolf County, I mean. And uh, so um, it might have been Morgan County. But anyway, anyway, he's raised in the mountains of Kentucky. And, and so he understood how you could holler, holler in one of these hollows and the echo, and you could still hear yeah. a long way. I believe it was Sister Esther said that when they moved over at uh, Crooked Creek one time, and George was just a little fella, and Harold, Harold was just a little fella, and he got out there and he whoo, hollered, hollered like that, and, and, he, and he heard his echo, and he told his daddy or some of them, he said, I think I'm going to like living here. He said, you can holler out there, and everybody talk back to you. <laughs> Amen. So he understood uh, 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 you know, by being raised in the country, what it meant for the echo to come back. But he said, you can get from here all the way out to the end of the road where 52 out here is. And he said, you can holler till you turn blue in the face and I won't hear you because you're too far away. Right. Amen. That's the way it is with us. With God, oftentimes, we get so far away that we cannot hear what God's trying Amen. to tell us. Amen. 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 Come on. Truth. Those things that we value above hearing and responding to the Word of God. My intention, I'm going to be honest with you, my intention was not to do much this year. But this building's got to be painted. That over there has got to be done. We've got to get this stuff done. And so it ties me up, Brother Tony, more than I'd like to be tied up. Well, Ike's got a deck he needs to build on the front of his house. That's going to take me, I used to do it, could be able to do that in a day. But I had Sister Esther out there to help me, but she can't help me anymore. And so... I'm going to be tied up three or four days with that, getting it going and getting it done. Then I got my mowing and I got this, I got that. First thing you know, I've got all kinds of distractions. Everybody. All kinds of things that I feel like has to be done. And then these things are getting in between me and hearing the voice of God, being able to hear the Lord speaking to me. Right. But we shouldn't, should we? I remember I was helping the Toller family back 30 years ago. And we were building his daughter's house over there at West Irving. And I was by myself that day. And I was sitting on the steps going to the stairway, up the stairwell, stairway. And I was sanding on those steps, getting them ready for finishing. And I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me. And God said, there's a revival. I want me to go over someone preach a revival. Well, immediately I get the head of God. Lord, I can't go right now. I, 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 I've got to help them till we get this finished. And I disregarded it. Now, if you've never disregarded the voice of God, then you'd be the first one to go out there and get a rock throw at me. I let it slide. Yeah. The next day, he spoke to me again. And I realized that I was going to have to get some things in order. But then again, you don't go to you know where to go. Amen. So I still hadn't heard where to go. But I began to pray about it a little more. Then a few days later, it got, we had a snowstorm. And various other things happened. And uh, 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 trees, ice storm, that's what it was, ice storm. Trees fell on power lines and stuff. We had electricity out here. They had electricity other places. But here at the church, we had no electricity. And we couldn't have church that weekend. And my brother-in-law, Roger Riddle, was living then. And he said to me, he said, why don't you come to Peter Ridge? And Roger wasn't even saved. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't, Roger. Marlene. She was living. That's my brother's wife. Before she got killed. She said, why don't we go to Peter Ridge tonight? And so we went. And because Roger left me there many, many times, but, but we went. And I got to preaching that night. 
Conviction fell on the house. Roger been backslid for 17 and a half years. And he come back to God during that meeting. And we broke out. We had, I don't know, we went a week or two. I don't remember now. It's been a long time ago. But I was able to hear the voice of God and still work. Amen. But oftentimes we get so caught up in what we're doing that we can't hear nothing but just simply what we've got our attention focused on at the particular time. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody here this morning besides me. Amen. Help me preach here a few minutes. Hallelujah. Amen. We got our stuff. We got our fantasy world that's fueled by social media and television just living in a fantasy world. And I'm telling you, this fantasy world is about to crumble. I said it's about to crumble. Amen. And I don't mean to get in politics here on, on Sunday morning. Amen. But I've said this many, many times back throughout the last few administrations when everything would start falling down. Amen. And then it passed laws and borrowed more money and billions of dollars Amen. and prop the economy up one more time on another toothpick. I don't know how long that toothpick is going to handle with the trillions of dollars that's been thrown on it this time. Amen. And the world in such a chaos that it's in. Amen. If anything has shown you, if you learned anything in this last pand pandemic, is what the liberal left Amen. is trying to do to the entire world. Amen. It's trying to get us under their thumbs, church. Oh, Amen. Where we'll be controlled. Amen. That's the reason the majority of you would not take uh, the uh, the vaccine. You just simply was not going to be controlled. Oh, but for the time being, with the midterm elections coming up, then it's kind of at ease right now. They're easing up all the restrictions. Amen. The mask. Oh, you still have to wear one if you go to the hospital. And I really can't blame them for that, do you? No. Amen. But the mask restrictions and all the others, they're loosening them up somewhat. Amen. Hoping that they'll gain power. But I'm telling you, it won't take very much longer. Amen. With the power, Amen. just some kind of other pandemic will break out and there won't be any food. Go to the grocery store now and see how full the shelves are. Talk to Brother Ronnie and see how much they're getting in at Walmart. Amen. I don't know how many weeks that I went to Walmart and Kroger. Amen. And found a box. Couldn't find even a box of crackers. Amen. I'll tell you where I found a few. Amen. I found some at Aldi's. They had one stack there. Amen. And just as soon as that gets out, probably there won't be no more nowadays after today. Oh, Amen. Amen. Are you helping me here for a few minutes? Food's Thank getting you. scarce. All these things for control. That's all it's for. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Amen. How many times is God going to have to do something to shake our very being, Amen. Brother Wayne, before we understand he's trying to get our attention? Amen. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Old brother from one the black preacher. Bishop Weathers. He was elder when I first got to meet him. Then he started his own church and he took the title of bishop. But we had him out here to preach. And I thought we had a pretty good crowd out here in that little building. That night he was here. But he come by the bingo hall. And that got his attention. There was, I don't know how, but they could pack them all in that place. That place is so full. And Buddy, he just about took his text out on playing bingo that night. I'm telling you, he lit in on them that the bingo parlor could be full, but the house of God be empty. I'm telling you, somebody's field needs to be set on fire. The God get their attention and bring them back to the house of God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Have mercy, God. Have mercy, God. Jake Joab loved his barley field. I'm closing with this, but he refused to answer the call. I don't know. He didn't have time. Maybe he felt like he'd done his job. 
he got Absalom back home. Mm -hmm. And in time, David, if you ever thought of him, he called for him. In time, he didn't. He still all right. He done his job. Do you reckon we get rocked back that way? Get to think about ourselves and our walk with God the same way? It's kind of rocked back. Well, I've done my job. I've been here and I've been there and I've done this and I've done that. But until we get home, our job's not finished. Right. Amen. It's not finished until you reach your final destination. Right. I said that, don't mean to be funny, but I was reading one the other day, you know, we uh, we uh, put our things in on our uh, GPS and I prefer to use my old GPS and I have to use the data up on my phone. So I get my GPS and I forgot how to get to a cemetery that we were going to out of state one time. And uh, I read this and brought it back to my mind. But I forgot how to get there. So I put the address of that cemetery into my GPS. And we got up there, and the GPS said, you have now reached your destination. I'm glad it wasn't the final destination. Yeah, right. But one of these days, it's going to be. Right. It's going to be. Right. And what about having a field set on fire? I'd rather God get my attention now yes, sir. than I have later. Yes, I really had. Jonah refused to answer the call. He ended up in the belly of the whale. God today is calling through the preaching of the word. Preaching of the word. I love prophecy. I love prophecy. I love it when somebody, Brother Tony, gets in the spirit. And I've got confidence in the way they've lived. And they can tell me something that God showed them. I love that. Amen. Don't you? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. But also know, know that people could get out of whack. They could be right on the firing line for a while. Then they get out of whack. This don't never get out of whack. Amen. It's always right. It's always the same. It's always stand. It always will be. Amen. There'll not be anything of that pass away. I've said this before. Somebody come get a song ready. I've said this before. Uh, 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 you know, heaven and earth will pass away. And Jesus said, but my word will not pass away. Amen. And I never could understand why heaven was going to pass away. But the present heavens that are in existence now, Satan has been there. Yeah. He had a footprint up there. Yeah. He rebelled against God. He got thrown out. Amen. The new heaven and the new earth will be a place where the devil had never set a foot on. He's never ever going to set a foot on it. He's always going to be in hell. He's always going to be in that, in that abyss burning forever and ever in that lake of fire. He's always going to be there. But that new heaven and that new earth, that bugger won't be there. He won't be there to distract us. He won't be there to pull us away. How about we get our minds set on heaven today more than we ever have? And when we hear the call of God, if I could compare Absalom's call for Joab to be the call of God, when we hear the call of God, could we answer God's call? One thing he's called us for is to holiness. Bible holiness. I don't care what the world says. There's a way for us to live, dress, 
act Amen. that's separate from all the Amen. rest of this ungodly world. Right. There's a way for us. And I know this gets contradicted. People say it's not so, but it's there. It's right in the book. Amen. You don't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. They said, them, them, them holiness people, they haven't been to Bible school. They haven't learned this. I don't have to go to Bible school to know how to live right. Amen. The Holy Ghost will teach me that. Amen. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. But I do like to study to get down into the deeper things of God's Word. Nothing yes. wrong with that. Right. My God. While they're contradicting us and saying they've never been to Bible school. They've never been here. They've never been that. They don't have this. They don't have that. If getting educated in the Bible would cause me to turn my back on God, you can burn every seminary in this country as far as I'm concerned. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want more of God today. How about yeah. you? Yeah. I believe God's called us to hold us. I believe he's called us to the altar. I believe he's calling us to repentance. What have I got to repent about, preacher? Hey, Amen. I'm telling you, the time we failed him, the time we failed to pray, the time we failed to answer the call. Yeah. And God began to deal with old Daniel. Daniel said that he prayed he repented not for his own sins but for the sins of his nation. Uh -huh. right. And when he got down into some real good repentance, Amen. he heard from heaven. Amen. How about you today? Can we stand all over the